Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher, and welcome to this week's episode of All About Canadian Books. This week, we're going to get to know author K.R. Wilson a little better, and I am so excited. I will ask him a series of 10 quick questions, and this will be followed up on Thursday, February 24th with the second interview, and we will, it'll be a book chat about his novel, Call Me Stan. So... This week's guest, K.R. Wilson, he has a bachelor of music, uh, sorry, a bachelor of music degree in theory and composition from the University of Calgary. And according to him, this probably explains why there's so much damn music in his books. Kevin's debut novel, An Idea About My Dead Uncle, received the inaugural Guernica Prize for an unpublished manuscript in 2018. Call Me Stan is his second novel, and it is also published by Guernica. Welcome to All About Canadian Books, K.R. Wilson. <laughs> Thank you, Crystal. It's wonderful to be here. Well, I'm excited, so let's get to know you better. Okay. First of all, what does K.R. stand for? K.R. stands for Kevin Robert, though no one ever called me Kevin Robert except my mother. <laughs> <clears throat> And, and I knew I was in trouble. Oh, <laughs> but you typically go by Kevin? I do. Oh, yeah. okay. um, there's already a fairly well-known American novelist named Kevin Wilson, so I couldn't go by Kevin, so I opted for the initials. Okay. Now, how long have you lived in Toronto, Kevin? I came here in 1988 for a one-year contract. I'd always thought, oh, it'd be nice to live in Toronto for a year or two. So that seemed like a good opportunity. And I'm still here. <laughs> now, you have a passion for music. How old were you when you learned about this passion? Um, I was probably around six when my parents signed me up for accordion lessons. And... Uh, I ended up with a, a, a very fine teacher who emphasized uh, a, a more modern variety of accordion that was able to go beyond the, the kind of ethnic or folk music stereotypes and, uh, and <clears throat> really wonderfully handle a whole range of classical and avant-garde music. And I just stayed with that right through my Bachelor of Music degree. Okay. And um, what was your favorite childhood song? You know, I, I'm sorry, I can't really think of one. That's quite all right. Do you have a favorite song right now? <laughs> I listen to so much music in so many different genres that it would be kind of hard to pin it down. Oh, okay. Do you read a lot of historical fiction? I read a lot of all kinds of fiction. When I read historical fiction, um, it's probably mostly because the, the book itself appealed to me in some way rather than, than uh, because of the genre. Uh, it's, it's not as though I, I seek it out by genre. It, it's more to do with the book, the individual book itself. Okay. Um, who are your musical influences? Well, if we're speaking in terms of uh, composing, I don't know that I necessarily have specific composers that I could point to. Probably I rely on the, the kinds of techniques that I learned when I was doing my undergrad degree. Um, in terms of where the music fits into my writing, mm -hmm. um, you'll know and your viewers will know if they read the book that there are some sections of Call Me Stan that are really music heavy. And uh, so the, the, the inspiration for writing the music parts of those sections really came from the music of the period. So the period in mid 19th century Zurich where uh, the composer Wagner is so prominent and there are other lesser known composers from that period. I, I listened to a lot of music from, from that time and place and ended up with, uh, with recordings of some fairly obscure stuff that's uh, really actually quite lovely. Okay. Uh, you play the accordion. Do you play <laughs> any other instruments? 
not with any level of skill anymore. <laughs> I, I, uh, if you don't practice yeah. steadily, the the skill kind of disappears. I have a couple of electronic keyboards that uh, that I don't sit at as often as I probably ought to, um, and I've recently started farting around a bit with a bass guitar, but it's very much early days there. <laughs> um, very intrigued by this. What is it like to sing in a in a hundred voice choir? That's that has really been my musical outlet in recent years, and it's 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 just so nourishing uh, in a way to to sing to make music together with a group that size. You know, sometimes it's just the choir. Sometimes it's with a piano accompaniment or a small ensemble. Sometimes it's with a full orchestra. Um, and it's it's just a very satisfying experience. It's been really unfortunate not to have been able to do that for the last two years because of COVID. Um, the, the choir is carried on, but mostly with Zoom rehearsals and occasional like virtual choir recordings where each chorister records their part individually and then they get mixed together. Um, you know, which it's been great for the choir to be able to do that to yeah. to keep going, but it's it's nowhere near as satisfying as making music together in person. Yeah, I, I can't imagine the energy that would come from that many voices in one room. I think it would be really, really beautiful. It, it really is. And and I, I think even just acoustically, the voices support one another. So the the, the singing comes more freely when there are other voices singing the same things or or things that uh, that blend with it. Oh, um, can you please share a significant moment in your life? This is an easy one. Um, in 2000, my wife and I went to China to adopt our daughter, oh. which uh, was life-changing in the most positive possible way. Um, she's now uh, coming up to 22 years old. Um, and in fact, our, our journey to China to go through that process was the inspiration, well, was an inspiration for my debut novel, An Idea About My Dead Uncle. It's, it's not about the adoption process, but it's very much about uh, um, are very, very uh, informed by uh, the experience of traveling to China and through various parts of China. Oh my goodness. Now, did you go to Guangzhou? Is that where you picked up your daughter? No. Uh, uh, our daughter was from Jiangsu province, which is uh, the province that Nanjing is in. Mm. So we flew into Beijing and then we stayed in Nanjing for about a week during doing the uh, the adoption paperwork. And then we were in Beijing for about a week. There was a large group of us. There were, I think, about, yeah. about uh, 15 or 20 families. And uh, then we were in Beijing for about a week doing the immigration paperwork, which includes medical examinations and so on. So it was about two weeks all in, in different parts of the country. Oh, incredible. And this last question, and Kevin, this is very, very, very important. Do you sing in the shower? <laughs> Not ordinarily, no. <laughs> um, and when I do, it's probably because there's a particularly tricky passage of something I'm doing with the choir yeah. that I've wanted to, to go over and over to kind of get yeah. it set in my voice. <laughs> okay, so viewers, I think we know um, Kevin a little better. So you have to be sure to come back on Thursday, February 24th, because Kevin will be talking to us about his novel, Call Me Stan. I will put links down below because after we've been talking about this wonderful choir, you probably want to hear um, Kevin sing in his group. So there'll be a link down there for that. And also a link to Kevin's website and also to Guernica's website as well. So if you want to purchase a copy of his novel, you'll be able to do that. Thank you so much, Kevin. Thank you, Crystal. It's been a pleasure. And thank you to our viewers. Bye.